Today we'll continue my printing series from my trip to Venice, Italy, so let's go to the darkroom. So today I wanna check once again temperature of my chemicals with a digital thermometer, because I usually trust my analog one and it's not so precise, especially for color chemistry. What is important for me in this process is repeatability, and as you can understand, it's much better to use temperature control system or use a bath system for paper development. So the paper developer system is not so expensive, but in reality I don't have a space in my apartment and I don't want to build up the additional system for paper development. So let's load up the negative and to remove all the static electricity from my negative, I'm using this anti-static gun. After I remove all the charge from the surface, I can easily clean up the surface of the carrier. What is important, and this is actually my background from the clean room work, carrier itself should be metallic with a glass, and should be not plastic, because you can wash it with the acetone and isopropanol and apply drying procedure in a clean space. Unfortunately, even in modern world, you cannot buy the goods in larder. Because a modern light source, it's not the system, and it's the same thing as a digital camera, it's not only a matrix, it's also a system, menu, exposure, color corrections, and so on. Speaking of color corrections, it's actually quite important to remove all the background from the negative. And when you focus on a grain, it's not so important if the picture is in focus or not really, because you're not really changing the distance. But if you have blank space on your negative, it will be the same thing as applying no filtration from the negative itself, so it means the light not passing through the all three layers or even more, depends on the film, on your negative and it's directly going on your paper. And because you diffuse all the lights what is hitting your paper, it means you'll make a corrections from your calibration also for the sides of the negative. And it's also important when you search for the middle position on negative. Your middle position, if you remove the filter, should be around the middle of the negative itself, so it means you have a good correction bias point, and everything on the negative is actually intermixed in one grey color. As I present in the previous videos, if you print this diffused circle or patch from this circle, it should be neutral grey on your paper. And when I finish up with the calibration, I usually have for 35mm film settings of 70, 70 and 0, and f11 and 11 seconds. It really depends if you make a proper exposure of your negative, so it means you have a good density on a negative, and if you develop it properly, you have a good color balance and your shifts of the color will be standardized. And for scanning, it's exactly the same. Most of the problems actually occur on the step when you develop the film. And if you develop the film properly and you have a repeatability in the process, the scanning of the film you can do with whatever you want and it's exactly the same with the printing. And as always you need to understand the chemicals in principle requires attention. And in the most film labs actually nobody make tests or test strips, so your development is more or less random. And for example if you find something locally, they completely don't care about the freshness of the chemicals and what results you get, because digitally you can correct a lot of stuff. So let's check my first print, and here I see the strange result. So let's quickly wash it and check it when it's dry and try to estimate what is the problem with the print. So the first thing what I can see here, my sharpness looks really good and exposure also looks really good, but I have a constant shift in one color and I'm not sure why it's actually happening. Previously I have a problem with one particular small LED light on my light stand and it has a one pronounced color shift because it's a narrow band LED and usually I cannot see this parasitic light especially if I have a bright light in my darkroom and when I'm filming. So but the testing method usually always work. So you take a test printer and you try to make a corrections. And my estimation here, I just try to switch cyan channel. So it means I'm lowering down both of the yellow and magenta channels. And after one quick printing session, we can decide if we have any results looking close enough to the final result or not really. 
and your first print looks exactly how you imagine it should look like and you don't have a problem anymore and this is usually really strange but for now I want to make more correction with the cyan channel so it means I will select something like in the middle because I make a steps of five my position number three is actually 60 60 zero and for the next prints I will go with this position but as you can see my sky is blue and it doesn't have this strange shift sometimes it's a problem with the paper for example you cannot see some fogging on the paper because it already have a pre-flash with a specific color when you expose it and increase density this color is actually changing the whole appearance of your brand it's not always easy to find the troubleshooting for this type of a mistakes and usually it's just simpler to repeat the mistake and find what is the problem if it's not repeatable unfortunately this is only one way to just reprint it again and forget about the mistake and just think about it what was the problem and when I put the 6060 setting on my enlarger I have almost the same print as I imagine it and this print is really sharp it has a lot of details in the shadows a lot of details in the sky and even bright spot on the building looks really good and I don't want to correct it anymore so the idea behind the color calibrator if I calibrate this picture I can recalibrate it to the different picture so it means I take exposure and neutral gray position for this particular negative and I can transfer neutral gray position for the different negative. And if it has more or less all the colors like in the landscape or in the scene with a completely mixed colors, the color calibrator should work perfectly fine. To recalibrate our system, we need to find the middle position again and as a next step you need to turn the knobs for calibration after first step when we set up the time for 11 seconds on the color calibrator I actually need to rotate the knob for calibration this first knob is cyan channel so if you rotate it left and right as you can see it's basically gain knob for the one channel so I'm taking my exposure and my settings on the photo head and basically with this gain knob I correct each channel to put the needle in the middle position of zero and when everything is calibrated we can actually transfer the setting for the next negative. So it means you can recalculate the exposure for your negative for different magnifications and you also can make color corrections and at least find the middle point and for just quick test of my calibration I want to load the next negative and just check if it will print fine and what I found from my experience if I have a long strip like this and I have a one negative which is first negative and I want to print it it's probably not enough good tension from the both sides and it created problems with the Newton rings but for now let's correct the size of the negative to remove all the transparent parts and try to recalibrate again and find the proper settings for this negative I have a little bit lower settings so it means my cyan channel is a bit off but probably it's just inaccuracy of measurement so you can say it's 60 60 and 0 and f11 and 9.5 seconds and what you can imagine if you have the same negative strip and close enough exposure your full print should be color balanced and already should looks fine and when I quickly wash it and dry it on the wall I can inspect the negative and find the mistakes what I make and if I have any unfortunately on this print I have a problem with the Newton rings because at the moment my carrier is completely fresh and clean from the dust the negative can be too flat on the surface and if you have a small point of dust create the Newton rings so that's it for today thank you for watching as always you can find my prints on my web shop and as always see you in the next videos